the commander in chief test front and center this week and uh, a reminder that he's running against Hillary Clinton, not President Obama. But it was President Obama mixing it up with Mr. Trump back and forth throughout the week. And Maggie Haberman, at the end of the week, a lot of Republicans had the jitters that, uh, yes, Trump sounds tough. That is his brand, and he established that during the primaries, but that his tone was over the line. It wasn't just his tone, it was the speech that he gave right after the shooting. I mean, we should just say what it was. Mm -hmm. he, gave, he gave a speech, uh, and, and my colleagues, uh, Jonathan and Alex Burns, wrote about this in, in very sharp detail. These were proposals that he was making about bans that were just fundamentally different than, than any norm we have seen in presidential politics in a very, very long time, um, if ever like this. Uh, and, and so it's not just sort of how he sounds. It is, it is the, the details of what he's saying, combined with, as you said, the instinct for self-congratulation right after this had happened. Nor so four years ago, when the Aurora shooting happened in Colorado, um, you had President Obama, who was a sitting president, halt campaigning. You had Mitt Romney, who had a speech planned, I think for the next day, um, halt the speech. And instead, he basically just gave a, a long, a uh, portrait of grief about what was happening in the country that is fundamentally at odds with what happened this week and so you are seeing republicans who have been doing this sort of now very accelerated dance away from their nominee in a very difficult position right. because as much as they are saying they don't like the tone or in some cases the policies not a, not a single member of congress including those who support trump were defending what he said right. and that is very unusual it, it is unusual and trump's response though is that you didn't like me during the primaries what do you people know in washington i'm right you're wrong the moral of the story being that the primary hasn't ended for Trump. That's right. right. I, there is no change between the primary and the, the general. If you watch those rallies, if you, if you listen to him speak, um, there is sort of one campaign. There's been no <laughs> pivot, as, as they say, at all, and there's not going to be. Um, and that's what has the, the party so worried. Um, and, John, to your point, the, the commander in chief test, I mean, this was a, a moment where, okay, how do the candidates respond? And Trump responded in a way that turned off millions of Americans. Um, it's not about politics or ideology. Uh, it's about decorum and taste. And when people are laying in blood in a, a nightclub floor, um, and you talk about how you were prescient about predicting this, and um, uh, I don't want congratulations, just most people in this country look at that and they say, eh, that's not for me. You said he hasn't changed, but the electorate has changed. That's one thing that you, you listen to him and you don't get the sense that he is sort of uh, up to speed on this new electorate that he's right. facing. It's right. an entirely different situation than his, yeah. his primary right. electorate. So I think that someone either A, hasn't told him, B, he's not grasping it, or, it he, he, or he doesn't right. care. Right. But it is right. a whole different audience. He knows audiences very well. Yeah. He was very successful in that. It's a different audience, and that's what he's not reacting to. His audience is his Twitter feed and his rallies, and both right. of those universes are They're reinforcing right. what he says. Yeah, right. sorry. No, and, and I think it's worth pointing out that for Trump's fellow Republicans, things have actually gotten a lot more simple over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the entire primary campaign, uh, they were wondering and asking and sort of pleading with Trump to please tone down your rhetoric. Uh, this is difficult when the leader of our party uh, is speaking like this for us to get behind you. I think post Orlando, it has gotten uh, very clear that he has no intentions of doing that. And so now, instead of wondering, you know, what kind of a presidential nominee is Trump going to be, I think these uh, Republicans are having to sort of decide, well, is this someone that I can get behind? And I think the rhetoric that we saw behind uh, after Orlando uh, made it just all that much more difficult for some of his fellow Republicans to get behind him. Uh, and to, to your point, uh, in the primaries, he's running in an overwhelmingly white majority male, most Republican primaries. In the general election, it's a much more diverse electorate, and it's majority women, and pr much more so even in the key battleground states. When you look at the key states, you need to win. So on the question of tone, here's Trump. He said this after San Bernardino, too. Let's listen to him here. After the Pulse nightclub, he says, well, if people in that nightclub, remember, it's pitch black in a nightclub. It's 2 in the morning. If people in that nightclub had guns strapped to their ankles on a holster, he thinks, Mr. Trump says, things would have been different. If we had people where the bullets were going in the opposite direction, right smack between the eyes of this maniac, if some of those wonderful people had guns strapped right here, right to their waist, and this son of a comes out and starts shooting, and one of the people in that room happened to have it and goes boom, boom, you know what? That would have been a beautiful, beautiful sight. Now, now this... This is presidential campaign number eight for me. I'm the old guy at the table. Uh, I've never seen anybody running for president who runs around doing this and doing this. Uh, but again, it begs the question, are we wrong? Uh, I don't think so. And again, I don't, I'm not 
maybe we might prove uh, uh, every everything uh, we know about general elections might prove wrong but i agree with jeff <laughs> that this is there's a hundred million voters who didn't vote in either primary who are, or, or more who are going to decide this election um and and what trump is doing feels you know sort of like a release valve uh to some people it, it, it offends other people and to jonathan's point He's not doing anything to expand out. It's just become this sort of re self-reinforcing loop. Yeah. The states that he was in last week, his schedule, the other point I would make about this, right. and this is helping him, I think, not realize what the shift is in these audiences. Right. He did a, a Richmond, Virginia rally. He got a good-sized crowd for any politician, but for Trump, it was small. It was right. booked in a 13,000-seat arena. I think there were maybe 3,000 people there. Again, not bad for a Friday night for anybody, but far from full, not great advance work, and a different type of state. He then, the next week, driven very heavily by a fundraising schedule set for him by the RNC was in Texas for two days right. he was in Georgia he was in North Carolina that one makes a little more sense but he is burning up weeks chasing money in states that are, are going to be pretty solidly red pretty red red and you mentioned has he learned the lessons of the primaries he learned that he's in a different environment it's clear the Clinton campaign has studied the Republican primaries because number one they're after him every news cycle on every possible platform but number two there's been this debate you know Donald Trump says he said this past week that President Obama should resign in disgrace his words if he didn't use the words radical Islam. So Hillary Clinton is reluctant to use that term, so she used radical Islamism or radical Islamist to make the distinction. But it's pretty clear, listen to her, it's like, Mr. Trump, sure, I'll say this, and then let's focus more on you. If it matters what we do more than what we say, and you know, it mattered we got bin Laden, not what name we called him. Whether you call it radical jihadism, radical Islamism, I think they mean the same thing. I'm happy to say either. But what I won't do, because I think it is dangerous for our efforts to defeat this threat, is to demonize and demagogue and, you know, declare war on an entire religion. I was in Cleveland with her on Monday, shortly after she gave that interview, and that was supposed to be the beginning of her big general election push here. You know, there was no uh, music and fanfare and banners, but boy, that speech, she didn't mention his name once that day, she did the next day. Mm -hmm directly focused on are you ready for this and it is you know presidential campaigns are job interviews right. and that's what we saw this week uh, sort of a side-by-side -side screen there so she's making it clear she's not going to be backed into the corner of not right. you know specifically saying a word here but also going on to say something that President Bush said eight right. years ago he said right. I am not or in a in a 2001, excuse me, six days after 9-11. He said, we're not going to paint an entire religion here. That's what is giving Republicans so much unease about this, just the tone and language of uh, Mr. Trump.